evening everybody I know it's really technically 2 49 p.m. but I'm here wanting to spend this awesome time with you just to really 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 hopefully give you guys some encouragement and maybe you can encourage me um, I need some prayer right now I can't go into detail it's involving my family uh, there's some things I've been dealing with for years that I still keep having to continually give to the Lord over. But uh, I'm having a major concern for my family, uh, for this particular family member, because I think this family member is doing something that I believe goes against God's Word. And I'm very scared for them. And I don't want to interfere with possibly they feel being genuinely called to do this but based on what I know of their character and their spiritual and ac academic qualifications this is something that they don't belong doing from my perspective based on what I know of God's Word and I'm just asking for prayer today's devotions really 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 spoke out to me in this area because of how I was feeling. Uh, I wanted to, to share that a little with you. If you ha guys have your Bibles, uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 16. Basically, the gist of this is, in case you haven't read it, or this is, well, at that time, Sarai and Abram had uh, left Ur, the whole nine yards, and went and, fo and followed the Lord's leading. And during this, Abram is promised by God. He says, in particular, in the first, oh, the first, I'd say the first six, five verses, that God promises Abraham seed children, descendants that will be innumerable. He says here in verse 5 of chapter 15, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said to, unto him, So shall thy seed be. And Abram's response is in verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. That's a big statement. Well, you see something happening in verse in chapter 16 that kind of uh, detour, de, de, deters and kind of twists the process because you have Sarai, Abram's wife, being impatient and she wants to do God's job for him. And how many times in my own life have, when I try to do God's job for him do I fall on my face and fail? I'm sure you can relate. Well, that's what happened here. Sarai gets the bright idea to offer Abram a solution for having children. She says in verse 2, And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Now there was a, a, a custom, apparently, where if the wife couldn't give children, they sought the next best thing, which was her servant, which was Hagar, who was from who was an Egyptian. So if you read further in this, Abram goes along with this. It says that he, t he took her as his wife. That basically he gave, she gave Hagar to Abram as another wife. So I, I, from what I've seen, she was his second wife. That's where we have problems. And you can see even further down the road in Abram, Abraham, who, who he later becomes, and his descendants. In particular, Jacob with uh, Rachel and Leah. But if you go further in this, 
he does this, and uh, the end result is, in verse 4, Hagar gets pregnant. It says, and when he went, and he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Here's the problem. She treated Sarai in a very dishonorable manner, but I can see why, because Sarai was using her, and it's like somebody agreeing to be a surrogate for somebody else, but in this case, there was some actual intimacy involved with said surrogate, if you get my meaning, and the problem was Hagar used this against Sarai any chance she could. But also, Sarai didn't respond in a very great manner. She was nasty to Hagar, just as bad. She go, She's so nasty, she goes to Abram and says, My wrong be upon you. My wrong be upon thee. I have given thy maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. In other, in other words, I made a mistake, but I'm holding you responsible for it. You don't, uh, you know, talk about blame, blame shifting, please. And it goes on here where Abram's passing the book. He's like, well, you handle it. Oh, she handles it all right. She's so mean and nasty to Hagar. Hagar runs away. And you see, as she runs away, the angel of the Lord finds her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, uh, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said to Hagar, Sarai's maid, Whence comest thou, and whither wilt thou go? She's like, Where have you come from? What are you going to do? And she's like, I'm running from my, my mistress, Sarai. And she probably goes into detail with this angel what happened. And she said, You know, I, I maybe I could have handled things better my, on my end, but she's been mean and nasty to me. She's used me. The angel says, return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. In other words, God's taking care of this. And he tells her further, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Ishmael means God sees. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Does that kind of sound familiar as to what we have now with uh, out in the Middle East? All, all the different nations of the Middle East. In particular, Palestine. The Palestinians. And many other Middle Eastern nations. And they're nations that, unfortunately, can't stand Israel. Gee, we wonder why. And her response is, she, and she called the name of the, she called, uh, 13, verse 13, and she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? She's referring to the angel of the Lord. She's like, I've looked at, I've looked at or gazed at a person who sees me, who, who understands Somebody who understands. She, she's realizing that God understands what she's going through. And, you know, I needed that these last few days. I really did. I needed that these last few days. And that's why I posted this verse, too. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. And I'm claiming that right now as I'm going through all this mess, as I'm having to deal with this. When I went to see my family this past week, I learned some things that um, I wasn't too thrilled about. And this recent thing I just learned today, I'm really absolutely not thrilled about. I'm, wor I'm worried. This person's inviting God's wrath. But also, I feel like an act of kindness was being uh, slapped in my face against me because my husband and I went to see my parents and my family. I can't go into it, but my dad was very suspicious. That's all I can say, and it really bothered me. 
And I was very grateful that I had my sister there and her fiancé to basically spend time with. They went out of their way for both Ricky and I. They really did. And I, I'm very thankful over it. But I needed this passage. And I needed to be reminded that God knows what's going on. God understands what's happening. And I was also reminded of some things out of Philippians when it came to this, because it was something I really needed, and that's why I, I decided to, to post all of this. I have a link for uh, the Time Warp Wife and, and the, the recap of uh, Week 3's Bible study, and I encourage you to read all of it. Something interesting that I read out of this, because it, uh, in Philippians 2 in particular, where he talks, Paul talks about the ultimate form of a servant in Christ that really, really, really got me. And if you read in, in Philippians, you'll see what I'm talking about. Something that Darlene Shaddett said in, in this recap is that she said, love should go both ways, and when it does, it's a beautiful thing. But our focus should never be one of reciprocal love. We became we become a servant of man for the purpose of pleasing the Lord. We don't love others because they love us back. We love because God first loved us, and I'm trying to remind myself of that. Sometimes family will fail you. And I really needed that badly. But also, I'm realizing too that whatever is going on with my family, that God's the one they're going to answer to on it. That's why I put the title about Keep Me In Your Grip, Lord, because that's what I've been asking. Christ willingly emptied himself of everything, but he, he still maintained being God. And this is what I mean. As I read out of Philippians chapter 2, you'll see what I'm talking about. which is something that's very, very dear to me. He says here, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That really got me, because that's the ultimate example of being a servant. In Matthew 20, he says, it says in Scripture, For the Son of Man has not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And with what... Uh, with what this family member is doing, I don't think it's out of genuine service to God. That's just, that's my, based on what I'm seeing. Does this, and, and I, I ask all of you, I challenge all of you, with whatever you're planning on doing that you believe you're doing for the Lord, ask yourself, are you really doing this for God or are you doing it for yourself? One of the things he spoke on too was walking in humility. And I, as I said, I encourage you to read this. Read Pro James 4, verse 6, and Proverbs 16, verse 18, because pride can be a very dangerous thing. But also, I want to share with you that we need to be careful when it comes to the doctrine that we are exposing ourselves to, that we need to, as Paul said to the Thessalonians, you know, search the scriptures. That's what I've been doing, especially with all of this, as I'm learning. Because this is something that very much concerns me. And I pray that this person is doing this for the right reasons. And not doing this to, um, I hate to say this, start another Westboro. But I lift this up right now to the Lord, that's all I can say. But one of the things I see through all of this, as he said in Philippians 3, but those things that were gained to me, I counted law. 
but those things that were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. So I, I'm just, I'm just choosing to, to give this to the Lord, to count this as loss, to just follow God on this. Just as he was, just as Christ Jesus was willing to leave behind anything that, excuse me, just as Paul was willing to leave any anything behind that stood in the way of his faith so that he could be faithful to God, we need to do the same thing. And that's something I'm encouraging all of you. I'm encouraging all of you to live blameless lives. Philippians 2 verse 15 states just what I'm saying, and I want to read that to you, if I may, because this is something that's been burdening me. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. I'm urging all of you, please, stay close to Christ. And also, when you feel like nobody cares... Look to God, the one who does see, the one who knows, the one who understands, because he is there for you. All you got to do is call on him. As Psalm 34, 15 states, people, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Cry out to him. I'm telling you, that's what I've been doing right now. And he's just been showing me so much. I think he's just been showing me, relax. I'm, I'm hearing you. Not only do I hear you, but I care and I understand and I'm not going to let you go. And that's something I'm grateful for. I have to get going. You know, uh, I have a few things to take care of today. But I really, truly lift you all up in the name of the Lord. And I encourage all of you, if you feel like nobody's listening to you, that nobody cares, if you're going through something that you think nobody understands... Call on the name of the one who, who does understand, who sees, who hears, and knows that his eyes are on the righteous and, and attentive to their cry always. Just trust him. And allow yourself to be in his grip. And this is what I mean. Whatever you're holding on to, whatever you're holding on to, be willing to let go of it and put yourself in God's grip because he'll never let you go. As I said, i got to get going. I'll talk with you all tomorrow. You have an awesome evening. And remember that he understands and cares. He sees. Bye for now.